So this video continues our uh, introduction, conceptual introduction to thinking about motion in one dimension with a uh, bungee jumper. So I've already drawn uh, one bungee jumper at different moments in time. This is the earliest moment in time. And then we get later and later in the fall. And this is uh, the place where the bungee jumper has got to the lowest part of their jump and they're just turning around to head back up into the air. So I'm going to add some information about the motion, about when the bungee jumper is moving really fast and when the bungee jumper is slowing down or speeding up. Information like velocity and acceleration. So with this black pen, I'm going to indicate the velocities. So in the first instant, the bungee jumper is obviously maybe about to head head down. Let's let's say that this is actually where the bungee jumper steps off the platform. And so we'll say the bungee jumper is actually momentarily at rest but is about to pick up motion. So this is the first time that we check in and notice that the bungee jumper is headed downwards with uh with some speed. A little bit later in time the bungee jumper is going faster with a bigger speed but headed downwards. A little bit later in time the bungee jumper is moving yet faster so I'll put a longer velocity arrow and here later in time the bungee jumper is moving quite quickly so a big velocity arrow downwards and so this is interesting because we're about to get to where the bungee jumper is going to um, slow down and, and pick up speed in the upwards direction instead. So I'm going to make this moment in time the moment in time that the bungee jumper is moving the very fastest. So they're really, really going fast. So big, long velocity arrow downwards, heading downwards really fast. This point in time, you can see that the that the bungee is is really tight. It's tight here, it's tight here, but what's happening is the longer the bungee is, the tighter the bungee is, the harder it pulls back upwards on the jumper. So let's say that somewhere in here the bungee is long enough to finally begin to actually slow, slow down the jumper. So the jumper sped up and let's say that the jumper now starts to slow down during these times so let's give the bungee jumper a little bit less motion downwards. So we'll make an arrow that's not as long as the one before, but is more similar to the one before that. And then this point right here, this is the point at which the bungee jumper has come to, the, come to rest at the bottom of the bungee jump and is about to go back up. So here is the bungee jumper heading back upwards. And then here's the bungee jumper heading upwards a little bit faster. And let's say that this is when the bungee jumper is just about to reach the turnaround point. So they're moving upwards slow. So they have, have some height and then they'll start coming down again. So they're just going to bounce at the end of the, of the bungee and finally come to rest um, and stay at rest uh, somewhere around, I guess, here probably. So they're just going to bounce or oscillate up and down until they lose all the motion. So here we're at rest. There's no arrow to draw. The length of arrow that represents at rest is, is an arrow with no length, so there's just no arrow to, to draw. In this case, we're moving upwards, but kind of slow. And in this case, we're moving upwards, but faster. And then in this case, we're moving upwards, but kind of slow. Um, yeah, so the, this is the idea. So let's go through and think about how the motion is changing. So the red pen, the red ink, is the acceleration. So interestingly, as soon as the bungee jumper steps off the platform, so let me draw the little platform that they just stepped off of. Here is the little platform, and they just stepped off. So they're not moving yet, but what's interesting is even though they're not moving yet, they are 
picking up motion downwards. So this is the acceleration. In this case right here, they are picking up motion downwards. This is the acceleration. And in this case, they're still, you notice that the bungee is, is not tight yet. They are still picking up motion downwards. Their acceleration is down. This is an interesting case. They are still headed downwards. They're still picking up speed, right? They sped up between here and here. But the bungee has just become tight. So I'm going to still give them the same acceleration down. Between here and here, the bungee is even more tight. They still picked up speed, so the acceleration is still down. But because this bungee is so somewhat tighter, their acceleration is a little bit weaker. So I'm going to draw this arrow a little bit smaller than this arrow. In this case, they're still picking up speed to the next moment in time that we're checking. So they're still picking up speed, and so their acceleration is still somewhat down, but because the bungee is even tighter, their acceleration is a little bit smaller. So I'm going to draw the acceleration smaller. An interesting point in time happens actually maybe right after this moment in time. If you look really carefully, the speed has just decreased over this time. So somewhere in between this time and this time, the acceleration has actually switched directions. So at this moment in time, we could say that actually the acceleration is upwards because what has happened is I started this time interval, I started with a large motion downwards, and ended it with a smaller motion downwards. So I must have removed motion, and the acceleration describes the fact that the, that the motion has decreased downwards. So this is an increase upwards. Um, so What's interesting, though, is, so this is a really tight, really strong bungee right now. And so it's going to provide a gigantic acceleration upwards on this object. What's interesting about this moment in time, though, is that the motion is zero. So here we are at the very bottom. This person right here would know that they are not moving up or down at this moment in time but they would feel tugging on the on their belt they would feel a huge force actually that results in a gigantic upwards acceleration it's it marks the turnaround point between heading down and now heading back up so when we start heading up though you can see the bungee is shortening that's going to provide a somewhat smaller upwards acceleration than here and we are gaining motion from here to here. We're gaining upwards motion under the influence of that acceleration. Now the bungee is a little bit looser, a little bit weaker, but nonetheless a smaller acceleration than the time before can cause, it still causes us to gain motion upwards. You can see that we sped up upwards under the influence of, all, of the acceleration that's upwards. And then in this case here, um, we're still headed upwards, but what's interesting is we've slowed down. So even though the bungee is still kind of tight, it must be that something else is causing the person to lose motion upwards. Can you see that we gained it here and now we're losing motion upwards, which is a acceleration downwards. Um, this bungee jumper example is, is quite hard. Um, I hope this helps you tell the difference between motion and acceleration.